Okay, no profanity, because I'm live right now on YouTube for AP Cam, so as you guys start dropping out of bombs. Have this. <laughs> Keep your king. Yeah, you two guys. Have a good one, you guys. Okay. Uh, I screwed up. Okay, guys. Same what? This is almost as hot as your mom. I sent it to Ryan. <laughs> My mom's beautiful. She's the prettiest woman on the planet. Yeah. Okay, I'll put it in and I'll re-upload. Okay, so I thought I put yours. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, let me do it right now. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Sorry, Kara. Karen, what's up? Welcome back. Thank you. Oh, I have a new CD chart. Yeah, CD of my song. Uh, Mr. Wonderful. Oh, then who's the actual teacher? <laughs> uh, Eric, you're right there. And you will be torturing Myron and Aryan. Nice. Do you like how you'll be torturing? You know who to. Also, that was going live on uh, YouTube right now. Oh yeah, I, was, I wasn't on Thursday. It's okay. I was helping in the vineyard. No, it's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do this. You see the chart on the table there? Right? No! Yes. Why? We don't mix it up, right? Every three weeks. Oh, you're sure? So don't let us. Okay, so can you see the chart? Yeah, uh, because I want to. Mohammed, we got a new seating chart. Yeah. I just switch it up every three weeks or so. So you're. Oh, is that necessary? No, it's not. Uh, Mohammed, you're in that row, but five seats back, okay? Uh, no. You're on that one, yeah. Guys, new seating chart. If you can find your seat, you'll pass the AP test. I need to like stuff like first. But I mean, out there, you gotta find it. This is a demo table. Yeah. And this is this side, right? Yeah, exactly. Nice, Marty. 
I'm smart. No. No. I need to join that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll put it. Yeah, I couldn't hear you. That's okay. I couldn't hear you last week. I tried to link, but it wasn't Okay, I'll get you. Why does Allison have three S's? Oh, I just misspelled everybody's name. Yeah. Remember last time you were in your Yeah. I didn't. I was I was sick as a dog. Uh, I'll check it. Yeah, what was your message? It was, I wasn't, I wasn't part of the APD. Okay, we're going to get you on there today. Yeah, we'll do it today. Okay, that's fine. Melissa's back. I was on the Friday. Complains a lot. Oh wait. Oh shoot. Did I forget you? I'm not. I'm sorry. Look, we gotta get you an AP classroom. We're gonna put up the link today. No, it wasn't the link. It was asking for the code. They didn't let me go. I'm gonna. I'll put it up today. Yeah. Wait, from you're not in the back. You're third seat right there. Yeah. Uh, Aiden, hang on one second. I'll get you a seat. Okay. Okay, and you're right behind Allison. Oh my gosh, calm down. Abby, you're right there. Did I misspell her name? Why don't you just go out there? Oh, that's fine. Uh, Aiden, do you want to... What I could do... Shoot, I totally forgot about Aiden. I don't know why your name wasn't on there. I think I accidentally deleted it before I found you at seat. Um, uh, new CD and chart, you guys. Uh, yeah, hang on one sec. Let me get everybody situated here. Okay. Um, ah, shoot. Do you want to sit? Um, hey, Zoha, new seating chart. New seating chart. Are you serious? Well, you're, you're right behind. Uh, yeah, you're right next to Mari. Uh, Aiden, I'm going to put you in the back for right now, but if you need to be closer, we'll get you there. Okay. Okay. Just any seat in the back. Okay. Oh, so I could put Aiden there. Aiden, do you want to sit closer? Yeah, so you can sit in any seat on the side over there, okay? Is it possible to seats to... Let me talk to somebody and see if I can... Okay. Uh, no. I just combed it over. I didn't poof it up. Yeah. He got one, but... All right, guys. We gotta listen up. Okay, guys. Listen up. We gotta get started here. I shut this down. Okay, uh, are we missing anybody today? Why? Because I want to cut the live stream if we're not. Yeah. Oh, Rihanna. So does she want the live stream probably? Okay. I'll do it just for. Yeah. Um. You go for another weekend. Okay, uh, jump on this thing if you, uh, and, um,
While you guys are doing that, I'm going to bring up AP Classrooms link again for those that still haven't joined. You need to do that. Yeah. How was your? Uh, besides the food poisoning, it's great. Again? I know. Uh, I had a real bad. Like it was my lunch Thursday that got me. I'm pretty sure it was buffalo chicken strips from Foster Farms. I really do. Uh, I don't know. Okay, for uh, for you guys, real quick, that are not on AP Classroom, listen up. Um, that code will get you in using the link that I gave you guys on Friday. Um, for we have like a few of you that are still not on there. You need to get on there. You need to get on there mainly so that when it's time to to sign up to take the test, you have that plus. It'll be like small assignments from there with questions and videos. I will tell you this, um, to do well on that unit one test, it's really gonna require that you've watched all the videos I've assigned. Um, that's gonna be the key thing that really helps you on that one because they go through examples that you're gonna see on the test along with the homework I've given you and everything. Everything comes together to help you, not give you extra work to do. So it's, uh, it's really important to watch those, just set aside, set aside some time. A lot of you guys are, like probably 40% of the class um, have watched the first three, and I, I can tell who's watching them and who's not. So if you get a bad grade on a test and a parent comes to me going, what's going on? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that record of who's watched the videos and who's, who hasn't, who's doing the work and isn't, who's doing well in quizzes, and just tell them this is what I'm seeing, so. Um, we're in the easy part of the class right now. It's it's a lot of review. It's gonna get worse. So just get in that habit of doing that. Okay. The other thing I can tell you, and again, this is coming from a guy that is not naturally well organized. Um, and I've told Tommy this a lot. Uh, I have the calendar that I put up on classroom is really, I mean, it's for you guys, but honestly, I'm the one that's really going to that thing, going, what are we doing today? Because I need it. I have to keep track. I can't remember all of that. Can you? Yeah. You can remember everything you have to do each day? <laughs> no, of course not. So I have three different classes I teach, and Honors Chem is already off on their own thing now. And so it's three different classes I'm teaching. And I have got to keep up with what's going on, and the calendar is the way I do that. So for you guys, get something together that helps you remember stuff. If you're already organized, then I'm, you don't need to listen to that talk. But yeah. Um, so just keep that in mind as you guys are doing stuff. I'm going to put this code up here so I can switch back. Okay. Speaking of that calendar, real quickly. Uh, we're in September, if you didn't know that already. No, how much is it going for? Pardon me. Um, you have a unit one test coming up next Tuesday. All right. Okay, that's good. Yeah, crying's good for your body. It releases toxins. Um, I haven't cried since the day I was born. I cried, the doctor spanked me, and then that was it. Tommy, is it not? He's not a crying. I have I cried. I think I saw you cry. You don't know. Lies. Okay. So uh, we didn't have school yesterday. Okay. So there was nothing there. Um, today we're gonna go 1.5, 1.6. 1.6 is new. Like you, unless you're studying on your own before you got here, you should know what PES is. Okay. Um. 1.7 tomorrow, and I will have this posted up for that. Uh, the AS means Albert. So the Albert stuff is what's going to be due. Uh, you're going to be doing a lot of Albert assignments from now on, now that we have it back. We, we always have like, it's like a unit, and then we get Albert. The school finally starts to realize we still need it again this year, and so they pay the, it takes a while to get the, they have to pay for it every year. 
we use it a lot because it's AP release questions. You want as much exposure to AP release questions as possible so that you understand how they ask them on the AP test. Because the whole point of this class is to pass the AP test, okay? Um, I, I, it sounds horrible. I mean, it's, it's almost like I don't care if you actually learn this stuff, you just pass the test. And it's gonna, you're going to have to learn it to pass that test. I mean, it's not easy, okay? So it's, it's really not an easy test. It's probably one of the harder AP tests you'll take. Okay, I could fake my way through, but I got a three without really, because I can write and I know how to read. Um, but I took lit AP gov, which we don't have here, uh, and AP US history. And I saved all the science. I didn't do the science ones because I knew I was gonna major in science. So I stayed away from the science ones and then just did all the ones I didn't want to take in college. So AP Lit got me out of a semester of English, and, uh, and I didn't even take AP Lit. I just took the test. So I had the teacher helping me. I'm not bragging about this. I just couldn't fit it in my schedule. And so he, the AP Lit teacher helped me outside of class like three days a week. So he did it. Yeah. Could have got four. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had taken it. Do I constantly remind Harper that I got a three on the AP Lit without taking the class that she teaches? Yes. It's horrible. Okay, here's your joke for today. What's the difference between a seal and a sea lion? An extra electron. Seal ion? And then there's nothing on the agenda, because I forgot to type that in, and you already turned in the lab report, so let's go to the next slide. Um, Great response. Great response. All right, jeez. It's got to be a It's unnatural. Ariana has a good side profile. Why don't you calm down? What's the right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not clicking on that, Eric. Uh, uh, what's your jokes, bro? That was the website where the jokes from. <laughs> that wasn't even there. That wasn't even me. Yeah, it was so Wait, you put a joke? Scroll up. Say hello. That one's Eric's. That one will face the other direction. <laughs> Hey, what's the electron configuration for argon? Oh, oh look at it. People are going right to that thing. Some people are like, I don't know how to do that. I don't remember. Some of you are Googling it right now. Uh -oh. Some of you are fake Googling it, Eric. Uh -oh. Brianna, if you can hear this, uh, get me out of here. <laughs> oh, I can't take anymore. Oh, it's not like that smart. It's the. Wait, what? What are you looking at? I don't know. What are you looking at? Uh, I don't care. You can pick the long one or the short one. We'll talk about both today. But... Uh, What's up? Oh, you need a face. You didn't stop bleeding yet? It's not bleeding, it's the blister. It's going Gross. Through. I burned myself last period on the Bunsen burner. Just throw it out. I did. And his toss. That's how I throw. Okay. Yeah, I burned a mass last period. Uh, oh. Yeah, but it, it, the plastic got, I burned this burner. I'm going to have to clean it. Wait, Kate. did you like purposely burn it? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to show them how fast they go up. Oh, yeah. Show us how fast to go up. Maybe later at the end if you guys are good. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah. If you're good. If we're good. Like your kindergartners. This is to clean bunsen burners right now. Usually it's to scoop stuff out of a container. It's on, it's like cement. I'm gonna probably, it's gonna go into my hand. 
Will I get to go home if I stab myself by accident? I mean, you might go to the hospital. It just depends on how severe it is. He's also unhappy according to the face. <laughs> 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 question? Yes. Uh, just leave a five on the house. Five bucks, the usual. The tip jar. You don't need it, you're good. <laughs> Alright, let's go over this. this just, go, is, just go for it. I'm seeing stuff I don't understand here. <laughs> Take a look at mine. I'm afraid to. Yo, sister. Strong. <laughs> I have two sisters. Uh, I'll also put a black background with a white smiley face. That's your answer. Uh, all right. Okay, so. You can see mine. No. All right. So today we're going to go over how to do this. I'm just going to put the answer right now, and then we're going to go over, review it, like how to get that done. Um, this was in the summer assignment, so. Uh, for argon, the long version is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. If you do the short version, it's ne and then we ditch uh, be 3s2, 3p6. So either of those would be correct if they don't specify which one to use, okay? So if you're looking at that going, I don't remember how to do that or I wasn't paying attention last year, uh, one, you're gonna have to really catch up because you should have been paying attention last year. And two, it, it's, uh, it's really not hard if you know how the periodic table set up. And I did see a lot of you guys going to that thing and looking at where it's at. Okay, so we'll teach you that. We'll remind you of how to do that today. Uh, if you need extra help on that, AP Classroom uh, videos. So if you're behind because you weren't paying attention, that's that's what you're going to have to do. That, that's one of the reasons why I highly recommend looking at those. Okay. Uh, okay, so before we get to that, I want to go over something known as the orbital diagram again. Um, there are three rules governing electron configuration. Now, when I say configuration, I mean how it's set up. So, uh, in my former life as a pilot, uh, long story short, one of my jobs was as a, a first officer on a business jet. And the first officer is the co-pilot. We don't call them co-pilots. Um, so, my job, I mean, the guy that was flying usually let me fly every time I was with him. So, because he really didn't want to do it. He was just there for the money. And, uh, and he was bored. So, me flying this jet, when we come in for landing, what's one thing that has to be down before I try to put it down on the runway? The landing gear. Yeah. And then a jet has retractable landing gear. So, that's one thing that has to be configured properly. It's got to be set up before you get there. The other thing on the wings, if you've been on an airliner... Uh, you'll see the back of the wing start to drop, and the front sometimes will go forward. Uh, that's configuring the flaps for landing because they got to change the shape of the airfoil so that you can slow down without falling out of the sky. Okay, so all of those things come into consideration. The configuration is the setup for that plane, just like the electron configuration is the setup for the electrons. Let me tell you something that will absolutely it's like the summary of chemistry, okay? If you want chemistry in one sentence, uh, if I could put it, it's all about the outer electrons. All chemistry, what do we call outer electrons? Valence, yeah. So valence electrons, chemistry is all about that. All chemical reactions are due to valence electrons either being transferred or shared, 
Okay. So if you're if you're going to write anything down today, it's all about the electrons. Okay. Um, so how they're set up is really important. We study this so that we know how they react. Okay. In first year chem, I tell those kids, you know, they they they're always asking, not always, but some of them ask, what if I mix this with this? What's going to happen? And again, the idea is if you know this, you can answer that question without thinking too hard. Okay. Sodium's got one valence electron. If I throw it in water, it wants to ditch that electron real fast and it reacts explosively. Okay, so it's all about the electrons. Okay. So the three uh, rules governing how these things are set up in an atom are shown here. One is the off bound principle. Uh, this is that electrons fill orbitals with lowest energy first. Okay. Now, in first year chem, we use the analogy of a hotel. And the guy running the hotel is cheap, so he, for him it's easiest to put people on the lowest floors first because to send maid service and stuff through elevators it takes time and money of energy, electricity, to get them up to the different floors. So he starts them off at the lowest floors first. Okay, if nobody else shows up, it's easy. They just go down the hallway to clean the rooms. Okay. So that's the off prop principle. Um, Hun's rule, which, again, we don't name any of these in first year chem usually, because especially last year with everything going on. Um, Hun's rule is every orbital in a sublevel is singly occupied before any orbital is doubly occupied. What I mean by that is the electrons will, if you've got something like this, this is correct. Notice that in the 2P, those two electrons that are in there fill it up like that. They don't double up first. So they got to fit singly before they double up. Okay. Guys, make sure in class your headphones are out and your phones are put away too. Okay. <clears throat> um, this one is incorrect because they're doubling up first. So they're breaking Hun's rule by doubling up there. So you won't see that happening in a normal state. Okay. The normal state in chemistry for electrons is called the ground state. Okay, it is ground level. This is how the thing's set up. Okay. Uh, the Pauli exclusion principle is electrons in a normal must have opposite spin. So you notice when these guys are paired up, one's got what we call upspin and one's got downspin. Those are terms that are given to them. Um, they're not actually spinning. It's a term that we've given them um, because they have some kind of magnetic property that makes them a little bit different from each other so they stay together. Because electrons are what charge? Negative. negative. Okay. Two negatives together would do what? Rep think of the balls and rods video last week. Okay. They repel. So there's got to be some quality about them that keeps them together, and we call that quality spin. They have opposite spin, which we think is like a magnetic property that keeps them together so they don't bounce out of the, out of the orbital. Okay. If all the electrons bounced out of their orbitals and left the atom, what would happen to you guys? Yeah, you would die in a big flash of light as all the electricity leaves your body and you would turn to dust. And that's how I want to go. Yeah, so just a big flash of light. It, I want a dramatic death. I don't want it to be something, I don't want to die of old age. I mean, I want to be old, but I want it to be like the electrons leaving my body all at the same time. Yeah. So. Yeah, I want it to be pretty for everybody. Okay, thanks. How are you going to like schedule your death for like, I want this to happen on this day? I, I, no, that's like suicide. So <laughs> I don't want to do that. Can I do it? Yes. Yeah, do you want to go to jail for the rest of your life? No, I'll care. I don't know. It's me. You just put in your will that you wanted it to happen. I don't think that's something that's frustrating. <laughs> Need the money to I retire and move me out of the state. Which day are you going to move to? I like Arizona. I like uh, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, like maybe Montana or. Wyoming. Okay, no, Montana is freezing. I hate Arizona. I was just there this weekend. Wait, you went to Arizona this week? What were you doing? Same family. Nice. What part of Arizona? 
Oh, yeah, it's really worth the summer. I lived there for a year. It wasn't bad. I hate it. It's gross. It makes How dare you? <laughs> oh, I love Texas. There's a lot of I hate Arizona anytime we hear that. All right. Now, one of the questions they always throw at us, us, like I'm taking this thing with you and me, um, you guys, we're in this together until that day when I'm here by myself while you guys are taking the test. So, yeah. Um, one of the questions they ask is, how many unpaired electrons does this element have? Okay. I don't memorize that on the periodic table. I think about the orbital diagram. The orbital diagram shows me where the electrons are visually because we can't draw this stuff. It's hard to draw. Okay. Um, the way those clouds are shaped, if I try to draw nitrogen, I've got the nucleus, I've got a 1s cloud, s means what? Sulfur. Close. What shape is this? Sphere, yeah. So you got the 1s, you got the 2s, so that has two electrons in it somewhere, this has two electrons in it somewhere, then what's after the 2s? 2p, that's three lobes that look like that. Notice they're slightly higher in energy, but about the same level. Okay. And then the 3s, and then the 3p, you know, and it keeps getting bigger and more complicated. Then you get into the d's and the f's, and now it's just this blur. We can't draw it. So we use the diagrams and electron configuration to show where they're at. Okay. The diagrams are great for smaller atoms, but honestly, electron configuration tells me a lot, especially the last portion of that code, okay? So when I look at, uh, for instance, uh, neon, if I look at neon and I just look at that last section, how many electrons are in the outermost level, which is the third level? Eight. And if I look at, I'm sorry, I'm looking at argon. So if I look at argon on the periodic table, it's in group eight. It's got eight valence electrons, okay? And, and again, this is review, but if I take it down to five there, what element do I have? Chlorine, which has seven valence electrons. It's in group 7A, okay? And so on and so forth. So. That tells me how it's going to act. If it's got eight valence electrons, what does that mean? No it has no unpaired electrons, and it also doesn't do what? What do noble gases not do? Or what do they? Yeah, they don't react because they have eight valence electrons. What is the magic of eight? It's full. Okay, eight is, for whatever reason, the magic number for most elements until you get to AP, and then we start seeing that it, all the rules are broken. We'll look at that. Um, so on this one, how many unpaired electrons are in an atom of oxygen? If nitrogen has three unpaired, what would oxygen have? Two. Two. How did you figure that out? Just subtract two from where it's at. Okay. You're in the middle, and you just you see how many are on the right side. Yeah, and that's one way to do it. So that's one, and if you look at the orbital diagram for that, there'll be another electron that's downspin in this box, in this orbital. So each box is in one orbital. For the 2p, there's three orbitals, which the 2p can hold how many electrons total? Six. Six, okay. The s's can only hold two, okay. So if we put another electron there, that's gonna give us two unpaired for oxygen. For fluorine, it'd be one unpaired, and for neon, there's none, okay. So the unpaired electron count can be gotten like this, or you know, using some kind of an algorithm like, like uh, Kylie used, okay, um, for that. So whatever it takes to get it down. That, the whole lesson in this class is you gotta do whatever it takes to pass that test, okay? If you're not interested in passing the test, my advice would be get out while you can, okay? Uh, I know that's a harsh, harsh thing to say, but um, it's really a waste of everybody's time, including yours, uh, especially yours, and you know, mine, if, you, if you're not wanting to do that and whatever it takes, then there's no reason to be in here, okay? Um, so it's it's because it's going to get ugly if, you, if, you, if that's not your desire. And I mean ugly because your grade's going to start to sink, okay? So, um, you wrote a joke in their response. 
I forget who it was. Well, it's not Eric. It's weird. Don't give him the attention he so. So, this is in the notes. Uh, this is how I remember the order. Okay. So let's review this. Uh, the first thing to get filled up is the 1S. Read it like a book from left to right and down. Next is going to be 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S. And then you notice the drop. What happened? And now, regular chem people from last year, this is something we didn't cover. And that's the Ds and the Fs. Honors, we did. So let me, let me treat this like it's brand new for everybody. Okay, and then for some of you guys, it's been two years. We want to get you back in the loop too. I'm I'm really pleased with the senior citizens because they seem to be remembering a lot of stuff from two years ago. And that's probably because we were actually here for most of the year on this stuff <laughs> before we got sent home. Um, but as old as they are and decrepit, uh, their memories are really good. So um, yeah, they've remembered a lot of the stuff. So 3D is next. Now that seems to not make sense. It, you'd think it would be 4D there, but remember Oprah in her infinite wisdom when she created the universe, um, or whatever deity you believe in, or if you don't, when the universe just suddenly appeared, uh, then go that route. Um, but when you get to the, to the fourth level, let's just look at it from a Bohr model perspective. The Bohr model leaves out all the, the P's and the S's and the D's and stuff and kind of just says, oh, it's a level. And we found out that's not exactly true. Okay. So here's the fourth level. Here's the third, second, first. What ends up happening with those elements in the transition spot is as they were being formed, electrons started to pop into the third level. There was room for them. So they started popping in there and it's almost like reinforcing the atom there where you get this reinforcement of electrons. And on our periodic table on the wall over there, or on the windows, um, it actually shows that on the far right of the periodic table. Okay, those numbers that are vertically positioned on the far right gives away how many can fit in every level. So if you look at uh, period four, which starts with potassium K and ends with krypton, you'll notice in that third level how many electrons can fit in there, those that can read it from where you're sitting. 18. Okay. So 18 electrons can fill into the third because you have 3s, which has two, 3p has six, that's eight, and 3d has how many? 10. Just count the boxes, there's 10. That's 18. Okay, for that. You get into level four and it gets nuts. Um, a level four can eventually hold 32 electrons total, not eight. So because of the d's and the f's. And then level five, if we had more atoms that add level five, we could, we'd see that too. Okay. So electron configuration can get a little crazy at that point because the D's just drop. So to remember that, because all you get on the AP test and my test is a periodic table. You don't get this. It's not open notes. Okay. To remember this, I just remember 3D like a movie that's in 3D. That's where the D started. Or you can remember D started three. Okay. What about these guys? Where do they actually go? Yeah, they fit up here. Well, actually here. Uh, you can go either way with that. Some periodic tables put them there. Some put them there. At that point, the electrons are so close together at those levels that it doesn't matter. Okay. So you'll be, you'll be okay either way. Um, most of the questions on the AP test are not, are not like, what is the electron configuration for this element? Okay. Um, they may have you explaining why it reacts the way it reacts because of its electron configuration. I mean, you may see something like that, but they'll like give you the configuration of you identify the element. Okay. It's usually a multiple choice thing you'd have to do. Okay. We'll look at some of those as we go, but Albert's got a lot of practice questions for that. I'm assigning some of them in the, these assignments so you can start to see that. Okay. But that's how I remember that. Um, if you need more help on that, look at the classroom videos, come in and see me. We can review it, you know, and go through that and make sure you guys have it down.
think I changed this. To, did I change this to multiple choice? Yeah, I did. Don't don't do the thumbs up thing. I changed it because the thumbs up thing is. Gallium is numero thirty one. So far, so good. Okay, so correct answer is B. Uh, as I watch some search, that's the fun part watching the change. Okay. Oh, everybody got it right. Okay. Uh, good job, everybody. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we got it right. I know, all right. Well, there's still two people that refuse to change their answer. Um, so for uh, gallium, gallium ends in 4P1. All three of these end in 4P1. So you can't just look at that, you got to look at the order. These are very similar, but what you want to remember is we're going from 4S2, but then it goes to the Ds, and the Ds drop by one level, so it's 3D10. Again, I'm just counting the boxes across to get that configuration down, and then we end up at 4P1 for gallium. Uh, this one's wrong because those guys were swapped, okay? And this one's wrong because the 3D, it doesn't have enough electrons in it, okay? Now, here's the thing, and it's not in the notes. You might want to make a note of this. Uh, when electrons are taken away, it doesn't go in this order. They get straight. Okay, I'll just let it go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, when they get stripped away from the atom in a chemical reaction, they actually get stripped in this order. So that's, that can be a little bit confusing because they do take from the outside first. But as far as the code, we write it as B, not A. I know that's, it's, just, it's kind of just the way we do it. So just know that. If you get a question about electrons being removed, it's, it gets removed in the order of A, not B. Okay. Um, now, as far as removing those electrons for gallium, uh, you're basically going to have three valence electrons for gallium because we count the outer levels, not the three. The threes are below. Okay, they're reinforced. Just think reinforcing electrons. So the outer electrons would be three on that one. Transition metals are weird because they make ions that have different charges, like copper is a plus one and a plus two. We don't get into why that happens. Um, but just know transition metals are usually going to be a little odd okay, because of the 3Ds filling up and the 4s. So they have some weird things. The representative elements, which are all the A groups, 1A, 2A, 3A, all the way to the noble gases, uh, those all follow the pattern of their charges match up with where they're at on the periodic table. Okay. Now, one thing uh, you might see for questions on the test and homework that we're doing, um, they may ask you for the electronic configuration of an ion, okay? So one thing that we run into here is, here's a sodium atom, okay? That's pretty standard, it ends in 3s1. If the ion is plus one, what would its configuration be? Uh, wrong direction but right idea. 
Yeah. Yeah, so this one would go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That guy takes off in the reaction. Remember, these are all negatives. They have negative charge. So if you end up with a plus one, what did it do with electrons? Take it away. Yeah, it lost. Okay. The, uh, go go back to this idea of giving and taking. Yeah, Monty? Like if it's a negative ion, doesn't it add one? It added, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, guys, think of gift giving, okay? If I give you a gift, I feel positive. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. I know. I do. I do. I like giving my kids stuff. I, I want to. Um Sure, I'll give you. I'll, you'll all be in the will. Um, yeah, give us a dollar. And I'll split my with all the thousands of students I've had so far. Um, oh, just you guys. Okay. But if I give a gift, it's a positive experience. If I if I'm a taker, that's negative. Okay. Remember, metals are giving of electrons. They're all positive. Non-metals are takers. They're negative. They're constantly taking, taking, taking. Okay. So if you take something negative like electrons, it makes you negative. If you get rid of something negative, it makes you positive. Like you have a pop quiz tomorrow. I mean, uh, oops, shoot, I just gave it away. You have a 30-point quiz tomorrow. Well, I know it's not on the calendar, but I reserve the right to, how do you feel? Terrible. Okay, I'm joking. You don't have a quiz tomorrow. I just took it away. How do you feel now? Positive. Positive. I gave you something negative. How did you feel? Ne angry, negative, yeah, I took it away, you're still pissed, but you feel better, okay, so, ooh, sit pissed on this, okay, All right. okay, so, sodium is positive because it got rid of one negative electron, okay, so, you notice, this has the same configuration as what element? Uh, Neon. This is known as isoelectronic. If two, two uh, particles have the same configuration, we say they're isoelectronic. Iso basically means they're the same electron configuration. Okay. So sodium with a positive one is isoelectronic with neon. It doesn't become neon. It acts like neon. It's all about the electrons. If it loses that one electron, it becomes stable like neon. Okay, so they're all, the, the whole game is for electrons, for atoms and elements to get into a state that is stable. And to do that, they give electrons, they take electrons, or they share electrons. Chemistry is all about the electrons. The protons and neutrons, unless you're a nuclear chemist, they'll, they'll have an effect that we'll look at later, but uh, honestly, for chemical reactions, it's all about the electrons. They're all trying to get to a noble gas configuration. If they can do that, they're happy, okay, in that. The universe wants to get to lower energy and more disorder. Whatever things will get them more disorder and lower energy, they're going to do that, okay, if they can. Now, let's look at fluorine, because this is where what Marty said is going to come into play. What would the electron configuration for fluoride be? Like, what would I write as the numbers? I, Marty's signaling six. Is that, you mean for the last section there? Okay, awesome. Notice that is isoelectronic with, this, uh, with neon and the sodium ion. So fluoride, remember, nonmetals get a name change, so it's fluoride now. Okay. Fluorine, extremely dangerous. Fluoride in your toothpaste. Yeah. Okay. So is it, How? Is it based on just one electron? Uh-huh. Yeah. That one electron allows you to put it in your mouth and fill in spaces in your teeth without killing you. But if you tried to breathe in fluorine gas, you'd die. expire quickly. Yeah. Oh, okay. you your expiration that. date would be, no, you say die. I mean, you die. I just, yeah. So all three of these... Are iso electronic. Can you come up with another ion that has the configuration of neon by looking at the periodic table? Which 
could if it was a carbide ion. Yeah. Really, all you got to do is go to go to neon and look at the elements near it. Thomas just gave me carbide as one, which is which would work. It'd be a carbon with a plus four charge, which is possible. Oh shoot! No, argon would have a totally different one. Yeah. Shoot! You should have gone with what, you, what I said. You said instead of. That's what the honesty. Okay. Um, <laughs> this did this to me last year, didn't it? Uh, I see last week. Can somebody give me an ion that's got the same configuration as neon? Magnesium. Yeah, plus how much? Two. Yeah. Ooh. That's why you're goaded. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, if I go magnesium, magnesium normally ends with a 3S2. So let's, let's just look at, like, magnesium ground state. Okay. Magnesium in the reaction loses its valence electrons. It's got two. When that goes bye-bye, we end up with that, which has that. Okay. Everything's trying to get to noble gas configuration. If it can do that, it will. Okay. Metals and non-metals give and take to get there. Yeah. Does it have to be like super close to an element or to like whatever element? Yeah, it's got to be within, you know, like you can go aluminum to get to neon. Uh, when you get to the non-metals, though, you got to remember they're going to they're going to gain electrons. So, like when I start getting into silicon, which is semi-metal, phosphorus, and sulfur, those guys would match up with argon. Okay. So it's kind of like the four. The three or four before it and the two or so after it, maybe three or four, yeah. Okay. On For like my test and the AP test, if we ask about isoelectronic, um, it's going to be pretty easy to tell because they're really close to the noble gas. So really the first few before and the first few after the noble gas will all be isoelectronic, but providing the charges are correct. And they, I mean, I won't put a wrong charge on there, but... So Mg2 plus would be... Um, Fluoride, we already talked about. Oxide, which is O minus 2. It's going to gain 2 to get to the neon configuration. Nitride would gain 3 to get to the configuration, so on and so forth. So isoelectronics is a big deal because it really shows everybody's trying to get to that configuration somehow. Metals lose, they become positive. Non-metals gain, they become negative, but they all want to get there okay? because it's stable. Stability is the key. That means low energy. The universe wants to get to lower energy. Everything it's doing is to drop energy, but it can't because if it if something loses energy, what happens to something else? It gains. Yeah, it's never going to go to zero because it can't. But every process that happens wants to drop energy to get there. Some processes will go the other way to get messier. So there's a battle between more mass and energy dropping. Okay, so it really, that's really what defines what happens. When I pull ice out of the freezer at this temperature, what is it going to do? What's it going to do? No, yeah. Uh, you should be singing that all on the P of G. Um, it's way cute. I can't. My ear is, it's not good. Um, but uh, melt. it's going to melt. And so... Um, it melts because it wants to get messier, but it's endothermic, which means it's gaining energy, which is not what the universe likes. But the going messy overcomes the endothermic thing that's going on there. So well, that's really where we end up at the end of this this whole course is talking about those two things. So metals are positive. Metals are always positive ions. Non-metals are always negative so ions. Like kind of go from like positive, like like a metal, to non-metal. It won't. It, they always want to go to noble gas. So noble gas is the baseline for everybody. Yeah, they're always going to go to noble gas. No one's going to try to... Go. You will see steps. We'll look at that. You'll see steps of losses. We'll look at that probably tomorrow, realistically. But um, there are, even in those... Like, magnesium doesn't just lose two electrons right off the bat. It loses one first. Then lose, now, for us, it's like that. But in reality, it loses one. Then it loses the second one real quickly after. And then if you try to take a third one from it, 
it's almost impossible because it takes too much energy to strip it away. So we'll look because it's in the noble gas configuration. Uh, it can be done. It just takes huge amounts of energy. Uh, neon lights are an example of that. Neon lights are just uh, us putting an electrical current through the gas to get the electrons momentarily stripped away. We can't pull them completely, so they fall back down. They give off light, which is the uh, Compton effect we'll get into later. Yeah. Straight out of Compton effect. Yeah. And then the, um, the glow sticks work? Yeah, glow sticks, same thing. They're giving off energy. The electrons are jumping, falling. And then the kid put it in the microwave, it exploded in his face. And then his awesome shirt. We're going to get there, don't worry. Oh, yeah, he's going to burn the mats. Remember? But it's going to be really hot. It's going to be really hot. Okay, so PES. We're going to start this today, finish it tomorrow. PES is short for photoelectron spectroscopy, but I'm not going to say that every time. I'm going to say PES. It's chemistry. Um. I did put a link to a video in the notes. I'm not going to play it right now, but Dr. Hayek is awesome. Uh, this guy, he does a lot of the lab videos. Like, he'll show how to do the different AP Chem labs. Um, his channel is amazing. Uh, and and he's, he sounds like if I had any family members from Armenia. I think he's Iranian, but I can't remember. Um, Iranian or I forgot. Um, but uh, I like his accent, and he really knows what he's talking about. So it's, it's really good. So he goes into what photoelectron spectroscopy is. If, if what we talk about today and tomorrow is still not there, this and the classroom videos um, will help AP classroom video. So um, PES, it's, it's, ma it's mainly a graphical representation of electrons. It's kind of like the orbital diagrams, but this is what we would actually see if we use the equipment to analyze an element, okay? So photoelectron spectroscopy goes along with mass spec a lot of the time, but it's a little bit different, okay? So I'm gonna show you one on the board and then we'll, we'll go into more detail. I'm gonna show you sodium. So PES graphs are very commonly asked about on the AP test. So let's say we have sodium That would be the graph for sodium's electrons. So let me show you how, I know, you're looking at this going, uh, what? So. Oh, no, I get it. So one S is how many electrons? Two. Two. So this is the electron count there. That would be two. The two S has two. The two P has Six. Notice this peak is three times higher than those. So if that represents two electrons, this must represent six. Okay. And notice this peak is half the height. So that's how many electrons? One. So we have our... It's a graphical representation of the electrons in an element. So spectroscopy is what we do with our, with our uh, spec labs. This is for an element, okay? So they don't make you do any compound spectroscopy on the AP test. It's very basic stuff like this. So like you might get this shown to you on a multiple choice question. They ask you to identify what the element is. So just with, with the peaks, they don't even label the peaks, but just by looking at the peaks, usually it's higher energy over here and lower there. Now, what we mean by this and you're gonna see it on the slides too, it's binding energy. What does it mean to bind something? Yeah, put it, hold it together. So as you get closer to the nucleus, the binding energy goes up because it's positive and it's Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law means electrons that are closer are more attracted and drawn in, okay? This is why the, the first few levels are so close to the nucleus, but as you get further away, wait, I just, I just, that was pretty redundant. The first levels are closest to the nucleus. Okay. Um, but they're the most strongly attracted to the nucleus. Okay. 
this is why it's almost impossible to get electrons away from helium because it's really tiny. Those two electrons are really close to the nucleus. And I mean, we can get it to light up. We'll show you that uh, probably tomorrow. I've got an apparatus where we can, we can, I have tubes filled with different gases and we'll run electricity through, you can see them light up. So neon is red, like actual neon light is red. Um, if you see a light that's called a neon light, like an open sign, it's a different color, it's not neon gas. It's usually argon or any of the xenon, one of those guys. Okay, so here's how the, here's how the spectrum works, okay? You'll notice they're going to give you some kind of joule amount here that's energy. Here it's 20 megajoules. Mega and chem mega, the prefix means a million. So this is 20 million joules per mole of whatever substance this is. Okay. So whatever peak is closest to the high energy is the 1S. Okay. So that means that as we go over here, that's the highest energy. Just think the nucleus is near the highest energy. So that's 1s. This would be which peak? What's after 1s? 2s. Now, if this is 1s and that's 2s, what element is this? <clears throat> the relative intensity of 1s is 2, which means 2 electrons. And what would it be? Lithium. Okay. Now, if you're going, how does Aryan know that? Your first answer is he, he either already knew it or he's really smart and figured it, and he's already picked up on what's going on, which is great. Okay. If you haven't, that's fine. That's, that's why we're doing this. Okay. Um, but he's right. It is lithium. So if the one S has an intensity of two and this is half the height, how many electrons are represented by this peak? One. One. That's a total of three electrons, which lithium has. Three. Yeah, three. Okay. There's three. Okay, so <laughs> there's three. All right. Uh, that was like six and a half. Are we doing the devil sign now? Okay. This is rock on. This is the devil. This is hangless. Yeah. Yeah, elementary school. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 They just told us to shut up when I was in elementary school, um, <laughs> and we turned out pretty decently. So, my kindergarten teacher, shut your mouth, Mark. <laughs> Work. He's definitely afraid of her. She was missing a middle finger. So. Yeah, she lost it. So. <laughs> What's her name? Chicoin? Yeah, it sounds like a candy. Mom lost me on a bus. Yeah, it's been happening a lot. Um, this year. <laughs> Anybody have any siblings that got lost on the bus system here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they turn up eventually at the transportation thing down the street. So, yeah, I mean, it's not fun. I'll tell you that. I know, I bet. Yeah. All right, last thing, and then we'll. Yeah. Oh, so like the closer, like. The peaks are whatever to the nucleus, the higher the energy. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you can tell. Because here's the thing, guys. Uh, not all PES graphs are created equally. Some of them have the higher energy on the right side to throw confusion into the mix. They'll put the higher energy on the right instead of the left. This one, again, is on the left. So you notice here we have, uh, we have what would be the 1S. Okay, out here. Um, sometimes what they'll do is, what you got to realize is these can't be drawn to scale sometimes because the distance between the 1S and the 2S is so great. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll put little dash lines there and then put the next one to show that, okay, we, we left out a big gap that's actually there at the atomic level. So this is really, you know, they'll do that sometimes. So you'll notice 1S2. 2s2, what's next? 2p looks like one, right? It's half the height, so it's half the electrons. The height tells me how many electrons. You gotta start scaling things. Look at them compared to each other. Okay, and if you can do that, you'll be able to figure out what this, what would this be, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1? Boron, okay. Um, so that's that's number five on the on the periodic table, okay?
So the PS, you can identify an element from it for, for starters, and it's a really easy way to identify it. Which we just said what it was. So that's that's the same thing, just it's been labeled now. The Z number is the atomic number. Okay, Z is also known as the atomic number. You don't need to know that right now, I'm just telling you. Okay. And these are on the notes on classroom if you need them. I posted this to like the pair deck. And then are we get out of 35, right? Okay, we'll stop here for today. You burn the mask, little buddy. Oh, you want to burn the mask? Okay, yes. Okay, let me figure out. What's, don't worry about it right now. Uh, let me, let me look. You may have to go to Albert. I was having trouble linking. You may have to go to Albert and log in. If I know, I'm sorry. No, I have it. I uh, this is the class. <laughs> I'm leaving it. I'm not touching it. They may take all break to type it in. <laughs> See, you want me in the picture? It's five bucks. Okay. Got it. Good. Did you get my gut? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna move the loud tap for the test. Have a great weekend. Uh, in a couple of days. I'll be here at lunch if anybody needs help. Or hey Siri, see you guys. Thank you. Oh, when, when can you come in? It's all like you have time whenever you want. That's fine. Yeah, just do it this week whenever you have time. I'll be here at lunch after school. Oh, from the quick. Okay. Uh, yeah. I gotta. I gotta figure out where I put the. I have them. Can I get it back to you at lunch or after school? Okay, I'll get it for you. Okay. What's up? Jenny, I got the calendar. I think I did all the assignments and. Did you take the quiz? I don't think you did. Wait, let me. I'll. I gotta look at the quiz. You know, it's from last week, then. No. Okay, well. I remember there's like that the quiz. Yeah, I think you took it then. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Uh, it's fifty percent unless the absence is excused. Then it's you'll get full credit. Yeah. And then um, what else? I can't remember. And then you have till the end of the unit to make up everything that's late. Yeah, but then I give you like a week after that to turn stuff in. So yeah. You're not missing anything, are you? Yeah, the last one. Oh, the last one? Yeah, just get it done as soon as you can. You'll be good. I'm going to use the rush. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome.